You are listening to Level Up Gaming Podcast, episode 122, Post-Apocalyptic Games. In today's episode, Josh and I discuss how to run a post-apocalyptic game. This was a listener-asked topic about their World of Darkness games. We discuss what types of tropes fit and how to build a post-apocalyptic game. If you'd like to participate in the discussion or leave us feedback, you can contact us at levelupyourgamingpodcast at gmail.com or find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash levelupyourgaming. If you like the content and want to hear more of the show, subscribe and we'll ensure you don't miss an episode. New episodes come out almost every Wednesday. Also, please review, tell a friend about the podcast, or share with your gaming group. Now sit back and enjoy the episode. Bow, ba, da, bow, ba, da, bow. Level up your gaming podcast. Welcome to the Level Up Your Gaming Podcast. My name is Aaron, and joining me virtually once again, Josh. How are you doing today, Josh? I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Uh, I wish I had more updates in in general for the podcast and stuff. I got I got some more stuff coming for for the podcast. We actually uh, finally got back in touch with the the DMD, or I did, and we're going to do some sort of live play thing with them at some point, and hopefully put that out. Uh, so I will keep you updated on that. But aside from that, I don't think there's very much else going on with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sounds exciting though. I mean, that sounds like a fun time. Uh, so we're uh, we're gonna do another listener suggested topic here today, which is great. Again, I, I think I mentioned in the last episode that Mike sent all these emails to me, and again, Mike, love it, really appreciate it, love all the engagement. Uh, I've got I got content out the wazoo. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, uh, one of your questions was, it, well, it was sort of a two part question, but the, the piece that I'm going to take away from it that I'm going to talk about right now is the, the post-apocalyptic game and specifically because you play werewolf, the apocalypse, uh, the, it's in, right there in the title that you're leading the, the game. If you've never played werewolf, the apocalypse or one of the world of darkness games, all of their stories in the world of darkness are pre-apocalyptic. The apocalypse is going to happen. Okay. The vampires call it Gehenna. Uh, the mages call it the Ascension. Uh, werewolves call it the apocalypse. But basically you're all fighting against the same thing, which is the end of the world is coming. And so the natural thing, I think a lot of people gravitate to in the apocalypse setting is what happens after the apocalypse, the post-apocalyptic game. And the short, the, the too long didn't read, is that they basically boil down to this. If you destroy the world, the game that you are going to build after that is going to be a rebuilding survival game. Okay? That's always how it ends up working out. Okay? Look at The Walking Dead. Look, <laughs> okay? Uh, look at... Um, uh, there's that history channel one called the colony. Um, it is more like a, I don't know if you ever saw this, but there's a history channel show called, I think it was called the colony, which was a, uh, a, like, what would it be like if the world ended? And then this group of people kind of came together and did that. And so like, it's them rebuilding the things they need to survive, uh, in a, in a post-apocalyptic world, it was sort of kind of a reality, non-reality show. Was, the first season was set in Los Angeles somewhere, and uh, they faced, they, they basically put them in sort of like kind of uh, isolation from the world for a bit to kind of get them in the mode of this is what it would be like the world has ended. And then the group kind of came together, and there was, you know, building of trust, uh, you know, securing a place to live security fire water all the basic survival things and this is what a post-apocalyptic game tends to be if you're doing it right after the apocalypse you can you get you gave me a, a a look josh that was like i totally disagree what do you what are your thoughts okay so when i think post-apocalypse um yeah if you're talking about um you know, the big battle to end all battles, wipe the planet clean, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, there there could be, it could be a, um, you know, a survivalist sort of daisy sort of, um, you know, 
Walking Dead situation where you're scrounging for resources and it's basically Fallout. Um, but it doesn't have to be. The apocalypse could be, and it, it, this is this is entirely dependent on how you want to write your apocalypse. If this is your game, right? You are writing your story. How did your apocalypse end? How did your apocalypse happen? What was involved in your apocalypse? And then the the second part of that is how much after the apocalypse is your game? Is it directly after? That's a good point. Is it you know like it? Um, we talk about Fallout because I, I'm I, I pulled up a list of Doomsday TV shows and I was thinking about Doomsday video games, uh, sort of give myself the mindset of the post-apocalyptic feel. Um, you talk about uh, Fallout happens either Fallout seventy six. We don't talk about Fallout seventy six. Uh, most of the games happen, you know, a couple hundred years afterwards. And yes, there is some rebuilding, but that's because things have gone bad uh, in that interim. Uh, Other post-apocalypse, I'm looking here, um, you get like, why? The Last Man, okay? That whole comic book series where the one guy was on the space station or on a space trip or he's in space and all the men on earth died, okay? It was a bad time. Um, That is an apocalypse, but the infrastructure hasn't gone away. People still exist. Things are going bad because people are sort of, are trying to fill in the gaps and there's a whole situation going on. And that sort of thing in a, uh, in a mage game would be really interesting. You have, um, you know, your, you may have uh, a small group of people that had gotten cloistered or sent off into some sort of, um, pocket universe for a short period of time while the apocalypse happened and wiped out all magic all connection to the magics right and you get back and you're the only people that have it and everybody else is sort of dealing with a world that doesn't have it anymore but still has all the same troubles that's an apocalypse it's not the same sort of the world has ended apocalypse but it is an apocalypse I get. Uh, I guess my my mind drives towards the world has ended apocalypse because it is it is the the apocalypse noted in the world of darkness, which is the world has ended apocalypse. Yeah. Okay. And that's in what way has the world ended? Is what I'm saying. Is is like um, are all the nations of vampire and werewolf destroyed, and there's only hunters left? Or, um, is like, who survived? What infrastructure is still around? And these sort of things you need to sort of plan out. Um, I'm thinking, um, what was that show? Uh, v. Was it V? Where they've got the aliens that come to Earth, and it's like, from... Uh, beforehand to now it's a completely different situation because you've introduced this thing it's not necessarily an apocalypse in the same style but you could also have like uh, falling skies you know where that's it's you've already lost the war and are sort of surviving against an ongoing face uh, foe demons have invaded Uh, you've lost the apocalypse demons are everywhere and now you're you're dealing with that it's so you what see, the, in the, in that apocalypse world, there you're still working heavy on the survival themes. Um, mm-hmm. I think that you are right that you could do in a post-apocalyptic game, but you have to do it like set way after the apocalypse, where or some version of order has sort of been established that you can sort of set up within your game. So, like the Fallout, the Fallout one is probably a pretty good example of it um, because you know you actually have some world that exists that isn't just like yeah we're just we're still trying to figure out you know we we have, we have this tribe of people over here that we keep fighting <laughs> every other day <laughs> like <laughs> and, and these damn bandits keep coming by every week <laughs> we're try, we're just trying our best right now. <laughs> i'm just trying to make some sweet potatoes grow man 
I just want my sweet potatoes. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, I, I think determining what apocalypse you want, you know, what level of inf- infrastructure is left, uh, figure out how how far past the uh, the actual event it is, who's still around. You can have a lot of fun with it. You can have a lot of fun making an apocalypse, a post-apocalypse situation. And it doesn't all have to be, you know, um, wander around picking up cans so that you can have enough cans to, to trade at the can for, for, like, <laughs> for, for scraps of meat. Yeah, it's, it's there's... Um, Again, you, unless you really dig the bartering aspect of it that's the again tone of your game what do you want to establish do you want to have a very heavy survival game because a post-apocalyptic world is a great place for it um it's it's an excellent place to do it because everything is bartering how do you uh survive the wilderness that is probably now harsher than it was before uh you know you're you're cut are you trying to establish a home base the the thing with a post-apocalyptic game that is survival based is that building a story into it is generally pretty hard because this is more of a sandboxy type of thing. You have to have very motivated players to move through that. Now, maybe if you really want to put together a story and your players are more of a follow the story type group, you could do the post-apocalyptic game that has the survival aspects of it, but you have people leading, I guess, the, the survivors. And then you are more you know, go fight off these bandits, go do this, go do that. Like you're more of a foot soldiers in that regard. But I think that even in that case, your players still need to have heavy motivations in the game because the game otherwise becomes quite boring at some point, which is you're just kind of doing a bunch of chores to keep the colony afloat. Your players are probably not going to like what leadership does. And you're going to have to create some pretty clever stories uh, around you know what is going on between these groups and you know conflicts and strife and things like that. So. <laughs> you could end up running to the same problem The Walking Dead ran into is that the first couple of seasons or you know sessions they're very interesting. You've got a plan, you got a plot, you know what you're doing, and then you get to the prison, and then you do the same thing you did at the farmhouse. So you get to the town and you do the same thing you did at the farm and you just keep repeating the storyline. Um, what might be a good idea if you want to have that sort of game is go back and look at how other people did it. Um, uh, Dark Sun is a great post-apocalyptic setting that d d put out, you know, what, second edition? Was there a fourth edition or was it just second edition? I don't think they did three or 3.5. I don't know. It's ages ago, but they had um, Dark Sun was a really nice uh, post-apocalyptic uh, desert world. There's a bunch of different factions, people doing things. Um, if you want to have that sort of survival aspect, you know, don't fall into the same uh, setting of you know, you're just trying to keep your base together and then somebody raids your base and now you're going to need to do base. Um, find a way to sort of build beyond that. Uh, give them hope. You know, make something new. I, I guess that's a good point. You really do need to have something that the players could aspire to that, that generates your your new hope in the world potentially uh maybe there's a way to uh repopulate you know the the werewolf nation um in in that or maybe there's a way to undo the miasma that has been beset upon the world you know by by the uh, you, you you have to have some bigger goal that the players can eventually work towards um ken ran us a game ages ago about uh, uh, it was, it was a, I think it was a post-apocalyptic game in, in a vampire setting and one of his favorite stories surrounding like Mikaboshi which is like a demon king uh, that, that kind of enslaves the, the, the Tremere 
uh, vampires. And there wasn't ever any like way out of the, the situation <laughs> in the game. <laughs> so it was just like, like, yeah, you're just like under his boot the whole time. Like we tried to like ingratiate ourselves to him. And like, we tried a bunch of different way things to do, but like there was no end to the, to the problem. Uh, which was, you know, you're you're fighting this new bandit lord. You've got Negan, whoever it is in your your world, and you know you're 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 trying to get out from underneath that, or you're trying to uh, build something new or undo part of the problem that has arisen through the apocalypse itself. So, like again, you you talked about you lost the apocalypse. You got demons that have invaded your world. Well. The obvious answer to that is that you can somehow rid the world of the demons, uh, you know, in order to get to the players have some goal that they could achieve. Like that might be your big ultimate goal. And that's the story there. And I think that you have to have something akin to that in, in your post-apocalyptic world. Otherwise, it really is player driven and you're just building the ba it's base building simulator, recruitment, bartering simulator. Uh, and you can have cool stories in that. Don't get me wrong. You can have really cool if you're you have you, if you have players who are driven to do their own thing. That is a very open world aspect. If you like, if you have players that like sandbox games, that is where you can let your motivations run wild because the players can really be like, I want to do this, and I want to become king of this new world that we have set up here, and we're gonna we're gonna create this. This, this, this whole, you know... King of Barter Town. Yeah, King of Barter Town, whatever it might be. So, again, I, th I think you have to have very... Think about about how you're going to end the uh, the shit that you're going through in the apocalypse. <laughs> like, that's, that's really important. No, you could take it. Um, that's... I think they did this really well in uh the first couple of fallout games you know you had in the first game you had they wanted to get the water chip so you go on a mission you find a town blah 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 blah. so there's like um a series of events sort of introduces you to a post-apocalyptic world and it leads to um there are people out there trying to destroy what's what's left and you have to sort of work against that uh, and even as as recent as uh, Fallout 3 and Fallout 4 were doing the same sort of thing. But when you just have that same sort of base building thing that was going on in Fallout 4, the game gets really slow and boring. So if you're going to be making that, introduce, um, introduce something that's going to... The players can fight against and win and have some sort of goal to, to, to achieve. Um, another uh, post-apocalyptic game that I've been playing um, was the Horizon games. Aaron, have you played these Horizon games? I played you know some of Horizon them? Zero Dawn. Mm -hmm. I was never, I never finished it, but you know, everyone oh. said it's really good. If, <laughs> but that's if it's not yours, it's not. If, if you don't like it, you don't like it. I mean, that's that's one of the things you you've been saying in this channel the whole time is that uh the game that you play the game that you run should be the game that you enjoy running yes. or playing yeah um and a game that you play on a console it should be no different if you don't enjoy it don't keep playing it because everybody's telling you to um but look f at it for inspiration maybe um and what that game did for post-apocalypse was that it set hundred thousand years after the apocalypse and uh the same things that caused the apocalypse the first time are sort of coming back and uh you know whatever sort of meager life people have eked out in this uh w what's left uh is now being challenged and that is a fun way to give your players uh something to do they have to go and make sure that the apocalypse doesn't happen again, destroying everything that people have built up. And, you know, but now they don't have nearly the resources they did the first time. 
uh, yeah, I, I guess that that's a uh, that is a way that you could do it, which is that you know your your one of your win conditions to to the the apocalypse game would be that you are trying to prevent another apocalypse, or you're trying to prevent you know whoever is enforcing the current conditions within the apocalypse from you know perpetuating the the same conditions, I suppose. Um, you know, and, and you're right. This is a this is a real big part where I I would honestly say KYP and really really know your players for this because they they have to be ready to be to be more of an active participant in your post apocalyptic game. I, I I would definitely say that this is the type of game that that any player really needs to have more motivations within the game, and you should establish that in session zero or even in your elevator pitch for the game because you're going to have a heck of a time otherwise kind of working this out. And these are hard games to do as well because if you look at Horizon Zero Dawn uh, as your example there, although it is backdropped over like America, right? It's like Los Angeles yeah, yeah, dude, area. Colorado-ish, I think. Colorado, for yeah. yeah. Um, LA for the second game. Yeah, so it, it's, it's backdropped over that area. But, you know, you're still effectively, you're, you're creating, I mean, it's, 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 like, it's like going the D&D route, but you're creating the entire D&D world yourself. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, you're, you're creating the fiefdom of, you know, Hoogaloo or whatever it might be. <laughs> and, you know, they, they, you know, and, and you've got, you've got the, these guys over here and, you know, it, you're, you're running errands between the two of them and, uh, it's it, it they're just they're they're very challenging games in that regard that you have a lot of world building to do to establish those settings they, it's it's much harder i guess it would be easier to do one of your your something happened and something's vastly different in the world that we know today but it's still the world we know today for the most part uh you yeah. know kind of apocalypse but I, I don't think that that's the, when people think apocalypse games, I generally don't think in that <laughs> in that term. No. <laughs> it can be an apocalypse, but you have to establish it. You know, a vastly different world that looks the same as it currently does, but like something horrible has happened, is a type of apocalypse. But it's probably not the one you're you're thinking of when you say that. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, 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 these are these are hard things to to deal with with, with the uh, the post apocalyptic game. And, and, and you know, there, there's a whole different set of rules. You're not bound by laws that exist today. So again, you're you're trying to establish that within your players. And again, that's why I said that it's going to be heavily dependent upon player motivations to get things moving in a post apocalyptic world. Um, because unless they are below a group of people and you have a bigger story going on there, uh, you know, I'm, try- I'm trying to think of like, how would I do a good werewolf game in a post-apocalyptic world or something like that, which is kind of where the, this, this subject came about. And one of the things I could think of would be like, well, you know, you have the post-apocalyptic creatures still roaming the earth. Is there a way to reseal the worm? Uh, you know, now that it's broken free and caused havoc. Like, those are things that bring hope and light to the next world that your players can work through in this. Again, it's it's still sort of the same fight that you had in um, in the pre-apocalyptic game as you led up to the apocalypse, but it is the uh, the fight now is is slightly different in that you are encountering mm-hmm. more of the villainy that, uh, that, that exists in the world around you. So it's a uh, it's it's a very interesting like you can you can tell some very interesting stories but you have to have players that are again really heavily driven to go do their uh their own thing in that world as well i don't know it's it's it, it's a it's a conundrum of a problem <laughs> i think everybody wants to be the guy that stops the apocalypse but nobody wants to be the guy that rebuilds after it I mean, you get those people that they, they, you know, they build their bunkers and they've got, you know, their stores of MREs and, you know, barrels of rainwater sitting in their backyards, but they don't want the apocalypse to happen. They're just worried that it might. So the game is sort of the same style here is that 
a lot of these games are um especially all the world of darkness stuff they've got all that pre-apocalypse this is happening sort of thing or it's it's currently happening this is the apocalypse you're in the apocalypse apocalypse crap is happening right now but afterwards oh that's that's like you know cleaning up after the biggest party you've ever seen it's a mess nobody wants to do that and nobody feels good when it's happening it's just a bad time again you you, you try and push yourself far enough past the initial point that's why, that's why i said an initial right after an apocalypse game is probably a lot of world rebuilding stuff uh you look at something like uh the forgotten world setting which is that like that would be a very kind of again you have to be really the type of player that really wants to play kind of that hex crawl there in that in that world but it's and it, it, it's heavily based upon survival and the roles are heavily based upon survival um but it is like a post-apocalyptic game which is that the world is shut down from one another because there is a miasma that you know, blankets the world and just recently people have been able to move about in the real world at like great peril and like that's that would be a, a an example of a post-apocalyptic game or a setting that you could use for a post-apocalyptic game which is that you're trying to rediscover and reestablish things in the world and move uh move past situations uh, if you wanted to do like a later werewolf game, you could be descendants of werewolves that survived the apocalypse, and you could do something uh, akin to like now you are werewolves are even further, you know, like sparse, and you probably don't run into very many werewolves at all. So the fact that you were able to form a pack at all would mean that maybe you have the the setting or the, the the enough people to start rebuilding a a werewolf nation or maybe you run into a group of werewolves and like that is it like that's the resistance that's the end of of kind of everything that you're you're working towards again th this you could apply that in like space terms too i mean you could even go like fantasy the star wars setting which is you know a new hope is effectively a post-apocalyptic game <laughs> <laughs> the, the empire has won everybody's screwed yeah no and but with any i i absolutely agree with you that any sort of post-apocalyptic world that you're going to create as a dm is going to be a lot of world building and if you wanted to do you know uh there, there's all sorts of different ways you could go about it you could have it so that let's go with your werewolf game you know you're, you're playing world of darkness you're playing werewolf um you've got descendants of your group have you know are, are forming a pack and you're heading out into the world to see what things are you've you've been cloistered away for a long period of time um and now you're back into the world because it's finally starting to get you know so that people can still survive out in the world and you run into other packs but they are wildly different and you know maybe that's the game that you're playing is that the werewolves you encounter don't look like the werewolves that you know and uh you know now you've got wars between different clans and nations and you've got uh you know these these post-apocalyptic beasts you gotta fight but this is all the sort of world building that you need to pre-establish uh and sort of build you know what communities are going to be where what's your world going to look like who are the different factions that are going to be involved what's the main story what are you going for um and it's all there's a lot of pre-build there's a lot of uh session zero to make sure that your characters have goals that you're going to be able to um you know bring into the game or that they can you know follow along with that actually makes sense in the world that you've created and it's a lot of work but it could be a lot of fun just an incredible amount of fun because you're doing everything from scratch it's not uh you're not playing with somebody else's world at this point you are really really playing your own world to kind of piggyback on what you just said there with uh 
you know, talking about the, the werewolf world, world and something that you could do is um, because werewolves were going extinct up into the apocalypse in the, the source material, perhaps the event of the apocalypse was sort of that magical reawakening where the werewolf gene becomes stronger. And so there are more werewolves in the world. They are just unorganized and unprepared, which would then give you a very unique story which is how do you reunite this and then fight, you know, your ultimate evil. Again, have your you have to have a goal established in any post-apocalyptic world. I don't know what the the goal was in the uh the dark sun setting whatever you Oh, the 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 D&D &D dark sun stuff. Yeah. Uh I would have to go back. It, it's been ages since I've played that. Um and most of that storyline was uh a bunch of different factions were going after each other. Um, I'd have to go back through it. I only because we were talking about this spurred my recollection of the the subject. I have to go back and take a look at it now because there's like a little bit that's like, remember this? It was a good time. I, I get it. Like, I, I, you could do something with it, but you just have to really have a good, a well defined goal for your players to be able to achieve. Like, what is the win? You, know, I, I, we've, I've talked about this I've, Jared and I have talked about it constantly about like your long campaign you're fighting a big bad necromancer or something like that in D&D &D. well what happens when the necromancer wins and destroys the world okay <laughs> like you know how do, how do you how do you everything's gone terribly wrong everything's everything's gone wrong you didn't <laughs> defeat the necromancer <laughs> and it did raise the army of the dead so now, now what do you do that that person has ascended to godhood and they are now a dark god of death and destruction and they rain it down from their castle on high and and cities have been laid to waste and what is this a new apocalypse is this you know post-apocalypse you this is all the sort of world building that you need to pre-establish but you get to have fun with it yeah if you if you are the type of gm that likes to world build this is a good uh you know a good way for you to do that because this is this is you are no longer restricted to any source material you can use source material to help inform decisions here and believe me if you do a post-apocalyptic world and you build your own world sort of and again that you may get too lofty with this but one of the, the fun things you can do is you can go back to existing source material and you can show the remnants of like this once great city or something like that or like and now or twist it and you can do fun things with with that, those those different uh, you know settings as well. Um, again, the, but the again establish it with your players. Session zero, you guys ready to be you know very involved in this? And this is the world, and this is you know make sure that this is something they want to do because it's not for every player group. It's just it's know just your not, players. Yeah, you know. absolutely. You you have to have a game that's. It should be fun. People should enjoy playing it. Do not do the, I have no mouth, yet I must scream because nobody's going to enjoy the game at the end. You're all going to be sitting around just like mad at you. So find a game, find a setting that works, find a story that works. But if you want to have fun with a post-apocalyptic world, you can really go for it. And there's a lot of fun things you can do with it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I agree. I feel like I'm gonna kind of keep rehitting the same point. Mm -hmm. So yep. no, uh, we're gonna hit the same stuff over and over <laughs> at this point. Uh, do you have anything else you want to add to this, then, Josh? No, I think we've we've pretty much covered it. Um, good luck. <laughs> yes, good good luck with it. Um, you know, I'm happy to answer more more questions for it. But again, uh, you know, if if anybody has done a post apocalyptic setting, uh, and I guess you feel like you've done it well it's a kind of a subjective thing there but uh if you have any tips on how to run in a post-apocalyptic setting level up your gaming podcast at gmail.com or facebook.com slash level up your gaming uh, you can also find us on youtube comment us on there like the podcast all that other good stuff and uh you know go ahead and review the podcast subscribe recommend to a friend all that other all those other good things that keep the podcast moving throughout the world uh and all that other and, and you know just keep doing that that's helping <laughs> I feel like I keep saying and all that other good stuff too much. But anyways, that's going to wrap us up for the week. So 
For Josh, I'm Aaron. Have a great week, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Do-do-do-do-do-do. <laughs> Gaming podcast. Level it up. <laughs>